There are a ton of options out there when it comes to microphone boom arms, and while traditional tall boom arm options like this are probably the most common, and I love them, sometimes they can cause some problems. They can take up some space in your frame right here, sort of cluttering things up. They can block stuff. They can potentially block the money maker. Now, I'm not gonna make any money, because anyway. If you don't wanna use a tall boom arm for one reason or another, then a low profile boom arm is the way to go. There are a bunch of different options, but I think that the Elgato low profile is definitely one of, if not the best overall, because it offers a lot of flexibility, a lot of decent features, and it comes in at a decent price with an MSRP of just $99. But you might be saying, wait, didn't you already talk about the Elgato profile, low profile, low arm when it came out like two and a half years ago? Yes, I did. That's this one right here, which I purchased back in September of 2021. And this one over here, I purchased in February of 2024. The reason being, they've made some changes and pretty much addressed all of the critiques that I had with the original low profile arm. And basically what I said at the time is that this is a fantastic boom arm, but it does have a few sort of usability, quality of life things that sort of bothered me. And then Elgato themselves left some comments on a few of my recent videos letting me know that they changed things. I also had a few other people send me messages and photos and videos showing that there were changes to the arm. So I decided to order one for myself and double check those changes. It turns out, pretty darn cool. So the low profile arm, if you don't know what it is, it is a low profile arm. That means the whole point of it is that it does not take up a bunch of space up high, but it can sit low to the desk. That means you could potentially have it run under a monitor, under a display, something like that. You can also then mount a variety of microphones on it without it blocking your face. I have these two mounted right to my side, which is a little unusual. It'd probably be typically mounted more off to your side, or a lot of people have them sort of under their camera and then the microphone comes out over here. This is for, you know, demonstration purposes for the sake of this comparison video. I always appreciate that Elgato's arms are made out of good materials. They arm themselves with strong materials. I Strong arm, there's a joke there somewhere. And that includes the mounting clamps right here, which are a very important part of a boom arm. What I like about them is they have a very strong lever, which has a ratcheting function. So if you're in a tight space, you don't have to just keep turning this. You can kind of turn it, ratchet it, turn it, ratchet it. And the top and the bottom are also rubber padded. So when you're clamping it to your desk, it's not going to chomp out chunks of your desk. My wooden tabletops here do have various marks and scratches and claw marks from different boom arms I've attached to them over the years that didn't always have that level of protection. Sometimes I even find myself adding that in afterwards with like sticky pads and things to help protect my desk. But the Elgato's, you don't gotta do that because it just comes that way. Another thing about Elgato arms, both the low profile and the tall wave arm that I showed you earlier, is they do have this proprietary mount here, which I like overall. The one thing I'm not a huge fan with, and the one fan of, and the thing that they didn't change, is this little nubbin right here at the front. There's not much else that can attach to this, so if you don't want to use their ball mount, you're not going to have a ball because there's nothing else you can use. You kind of got to use theirs. And while, as you can see, mine hasn't broken or had any issues because it's pretty darn well made, if you do have one that breaks or has issues, you're gonna have to get a replacement part directly from Elgato because nothing else, no ball head, no other mount is going to fit on there. And then it does have a quarter 20 mount by default and it comes with some adapters so that way you can do 5 8 or 3 8 mic mounts. But I think Elgato did that quarter 20, as I've said in other videos, because they also want to make sure you could use their mic arms for other things like lights and cameras. Not that these would hold a super heavy, you know, cinema camera or anything necessarily. Although I have seen some people who have put, you know, pretty big cameras and even the Elgato prompter on an arm like this. So, hey, it could be possible. But if you want to do like a small camera, a streaming camera, small light or something like that, you can also use that with these arms. That quarter 20 mount adds some versatility for that. But obviously it's really intended as a microphone arm and that's where it shines. It's great because you have this nice rotation and then you can also lift it and lower it. So even though it is a low profile arm, it doesn't mean the mic can't go high at all. You could potentially even use this depending on your height if you're standing up and 
going back to this ball mount here, it is a ball mount, so it's very easy to position the mic. I wanted to use these Lewitt mics specifically in this example because I've talked about them before. They are condenser mics that have very specific shock mounts and on a lot of other boom arms, especially even like the road arms, which I love quite a bit, it's very tough if the arm is coming at an angle from the side, it's very tough to position the mic where you want it because it's sort of forced to be facing forward, but I'm like over here. Because of this ball mount, it's very easy for me to position this microphone in this very specific shock mount, any direction that I want, and then the shock mount itself, of course, I can raise and lower to get things dialed in exactly right. So I really love that. You do have cable routing in the arm, and I mean, it's an arm, it's, you know, it's pretty simple. Let's though, now though, talk about the differences between the arm that was originally released when they announced it and the one that you would get now if you ordered it. Or if you have one like me and you're kind of frustrated by it and you didn't realize they changed it, here are a few of the changes. You might be able to notice right here is a pretty big change. There is now a knob instead of just an Allen key thingy here. So if you wanted to adjust the tension of the raising and lowering of the top arm, originally you had to use an Allen key, which they provide you, so it's not a big deal. And you know, if you've ever put together a piece of Ikea furniture, you probably have an Allen key around too. And now, as you can see on this one, there is just a big plastic knob, so I can loosen this, tighten it, change the tension and the friction. Overall, I think this is a big improvement because now you can adjust the mic arm without needing a separate tool. And that just makes things really easy. Even during the middle of a project, a stream, a broadcast, whatever, you can make an adjustment on the fly. This is a subtle change, but it's a good one. I don't know if you can notice it, but on the original arm, my XLR cable is popping out the top here and going down, and on the new one, it's popping out the bottom and going into the mic. They've now added an additional routing hole on the bottom of the top arm, so you can choose to have your XLR cable come out the bottom or out the top because that top hole is still there. And that's great because a microphone like this it works much better and keeps things much neater if I can come out the bottom so that way I don't have this extra cable kind of running and getting bent there. But if you're using other microphones where the cable attaches to the rear of the actual microphone's housing, then running the cable out from the top is the way to go. So just a bit more versatility built in, which I like quite a bit. And the main upgrade that really attracted me to trying out the new boom arm is this right here, stronger magnets in the cable routing. This was probably the weakest point of the boom arm. You have this XLR cable routing, which is awesome. It's excellent. And it's held in with these little magnet channels. So you run your cables through here. There's plenty of room to run USB, XLR, a couple of cables at the same time. And you've got this little magnetic cover, this metal magnetic cover that attaches on top. The downside is as soon as you want to adjust your, your cable, that's what happens. And if, you're one of, if you own one of the original versions of the arm, you know that frustration. That was something I talked about in my original review. It is so annoying to have that cover pop off constantly. Sometimes I've just put little Velcro straps there, which is fine, but then it kind of like, you sort of lose the slickness of having magnets because now I'm using like a bungee cable or a Velcro cable. The updated arm has significantly, wait, <laughs> significantly stronger magnets. It's kind of hard to communicate that through video where you can't physically be here feeling it for yourself. But if you can kind of see, if I lift up these XLR cables, see how quickly that one popped out. And this one actually, oh, I can't get the XLR cable to open the magnet. So that's, uh, that's, that's pretty good. And that's really gonna be the biggest quality of life feature because anytime you're dealing with routing or kind of changing some of your cable, adding some slack, adding some tension, even sometimes on this one, if your cable's a little, like a little too tense and then you move the arm in a certain way, it can kind of like pop that off. And it is, as you can hear, loud and very frustrating and that's not, it's just not a ton of fun. And as I alluded to at the beginning of the video, there are other options when it comes to low profile mic arms, but I find that they're either one extreme or the other. Some of them are so premium, incredibly high quality, but also really expensive, where I or you might not want to spend three or $400 on a low profile arm. And then the flip side to that are, you know, the bargain bin ones that seem like a good deal because they're like $25 or something, but then they just completely <laughs> fall apart. And that's also not great. I've done a video in the past about cheap versus expensive boom arms and what you're getting for when you pay that difference, because even though they might look the same, 
they are definitely not created the same. And that's why I think the Elgato low profile arm, if you're looking for a low profile arm, is really in that sweet spot. Good build quality, decent price, MSRP of $99, but it's sturdy, it's strong, it's stable, it's something you can rely on. The fact that the one I bought two and a half years ago works exactly the same and functions exactly the same as it did the day I got it is a really good thing. My wife also has one in her studio that she's been using for several years too, and hers works perfectly. She's used it a lot more than I have mine and it still holds up great. And the main point in making this video is to kind of point out that all of those things that I complained about and the issues, especially mainly the magnetic covers that I talked about in my original video of the low profile arm have now been totally revised and fixed over here in the new version, which again, I don't even know when this switched. It could have been like a year and a half ago, <laughs> but currently, if you're buying an Elgato low profile arm, it's gonna have all these quality of life upgrades. I do have the white one here, just because I already had a black one and I wanted something different. It does also still come in black. You don't have to get the bright white, potentially overexposed on camera version if you don't want it. But speaking of things I do want, I do want to say thank you to everyone who helps support my channel through Patreon and YouTube channel memberships. And believe it or not, the world of microphone boom arms is shockingly rich and complex. It's varied. There are a lot of options out there. So if you want to learn more about boom arms, check out one of these videos right here.